I'm Katrina Walker and welcome to my studio where we make surging simple. All right, and speaking of simple, I can't wait to show you one of my favorite neckline treatments. Now, of course, this can be a neckline or a hem for your cuffs or the bottom of your blouse. But the important thing is it's very professional looking, super simple to do. And it stars one of my favorite machines, and that is a cover lock serger. So we're going to use the cover stitch. So you're going to learn a little bit about cover stitching and, of course, how to create this really lovely look. All right, so on my table here, I have a piece of knitwear, a little piece of knit fabric that's been cut out into just a sample U shape. And I recommend you create these for yourself, kind of a, um, a little practice template. Whenever you want to try a new, new edge treatment, it's a great way to practice without having to commit to your whole garment, you know, and if you, you make a mistake, you only used up a little bit of fabric. So, okay, so here I have my sample neckline shape. Now, another tool this is going to use is a lightweight fusible web. Now, fusible web is sold by many different manufacturers, but the important thing is, is that you want to make sure that it has a paper backing on one side and that it is very, very lightweight. So, if you have a choice between regular and light, you're going to go with the light version. You want it as lightweight as possible because you still want to um, give the knit an ability to stretch out a little bit, have a little give to it, but it will stabilize or you know stiffen up the neckline just a little bit or your hem. Um, but it st should still have some give, and that's where it needs to be a very lightweight fusible web. Now they come in different different widths. I actually like to use a half inch wide for my necklines. Some people like the the wider one inch version but I like a half inch hem. So, remember this has paper on the back of it, so I'm going to place it sticky side down, that's the paper side up, if you want to look at it that way. And I'm simply going to fuse this around my hemline. I'm doing this by just touching it very gently with my little iron. Now, because we're going around a corner, in this case for a neckline, hems are a little bit more straight, they're easier. But when you have a curve, oftentimes you will need to go ahead and clip your fusible web. Don't, don't cut all the way through if you can help it, just make little clips. If you're familiar with garment construction, it's just similar to the way we clip a seam allowance so it lies flat. In this case, we're doing it so that we can more easily shape our fusible web to our neckline. Okay, so I'm just going to come around. See how much more nicely that conforms to the shape? It's fabulous. I'm going to go ahead and continue to make some clips into the paper-backed web. All right, now the reason why we care about what width the fusible web we're using happens to be is because we're going to use that paper backing as a guide so that to give us a perfect half inch fold for a hem. So you may have been wondering, like, why didn't she press her hem, you know, so that she knows how wide it's going to be? Well, that's the beauty of this. I don't have to. I can just use the width of that paper. So I'm just going to start doing that. I'm going to turn and move it onto the board here a little better so you can see. 
So that paper backing is in there inside inside the fold and so it helps give us a guide to help create the correct depth for our hemline. Start on the other side now. Work my way to the middle. The middle is being kind of cranky, but so I'm just going to work my way there. So right now, again, I'm not permanently creating my neckline. I'm simply pressing in a crease at that one half inch depth, so that when the next stage comes along, it will be very easy to do, as you'll see. I just want that one half inch fold all the way around. I've done that, so now I just need to peel off that paper. It always wants to stick to my fingers, like static cling. Off you go. There we go. Okay, doke. So I've peeled off all of the paper and now I can start to press my actual hem. And of course, as I'm pressing it, I'm going to be fusing it into place. In other words, I'm heat gluing it down. And again, this is why you want to make sure this is a lightweight fusible web because you don't want to ruin any stretch in the fabric. And just make sure as you go that it's nice and smooth. I have a little, it wants to misbehave right there, so I've got to correct that. The nice thing is this web is a just a little bit, not quite sticky, but it does kind of seem to help hold the fabric in place. And of course, we're pressing straight up and down, not ironing back and forth. And there, there is our beautiful, beautiful half inch, perfect half inch hem. Of course, this is the wrong side facing the camera. And so the, from the right side, all you see, of course, is a nice smooth curve. So now we're ready to cover stitch. So wasn't that easy making a perfect half inch hem? I love it. Okay, so I'm going to take my mock neckline over to my serger, and this is already set up for cover stitch, but I wanted to point out one thing to be aware of with a cover stitch is that you always have to start with the needles in fabric. So one of the things I'll keep by my serger if I'm using it for doing a, a cover stitched hem is pieces of, this is tearaway stabilizer. I could be using scraps of fabric as well. But a lot of times I'll use scraps of tearaway stabilizer and I will place those in my serger, you know, underneath, make sure the needles are going to land in this. And this allows me to go ahead and start my hem without actually even going onto my fabric yet. So the advantage to this is sometimes we have difficulty starting out if you're starting on the edge of a piece of fabric rather than going in the round, sometimes people have a hard time getting that started. So this is one way to help get it started. You start in a different piece of fabric and then you can simply adjust this in place and we can surge from our stabilizer right off onto our fabric. Now I have, um, to just to the right of my needles, I have a magnetic seam guide here. And so I'm feeling with my fingers. now. If I look at the, the front of my, my foot, my serger's stitch foot, this is a clear cover stitch foot, you'll see a little red mark here and there's other markings that are a little bit easier for me than for you to see that designate where my needles are positioned uh, on the serger. They're marked on the front of my foot 
And so I'm using those and I'm kind of feeling with my finger. Ideally for a cover stitched hem, you want that leftmost needle to be going right along the very edge of your fabric, maybe even slightly off of that to create the, the nicest looking uh, cover stitch hem. So I just want to make sure that I'm under my foot. I have my guide where I want it. And this just really helps to keep things straight. Now, if you don't have a magnetic guide or something similar, you can even use a piece of clear tape, believe it or not, and put that, um, not clear tape, colored tape, put that on the bed of your machine as a marking visually to help you keep your hem straight. All right, so I'm in place. I can surge right off of my stabilizer onto my fabric. Now, when I'm going around this neckline, I'm going to actually just gently kind of straighten the curve as I go. So even though this is a U shape, the neckline is a U, it's going to look more or less straight as I surge it, other than to the left of the foot, you're going to see the fabric kind of bunching up. But as long as it isn't bunching up underneath my foot, or underneath those needles, we're fine. So now when you stop your cover stitch, one thing that is important is to not chain off the end. Okay, this is really important. Um, what'll happen is if you chain off the end, it all just becomes a mess. So that's not how they're designed to work. So you want to make sure you can surge right up to, but not past the end of your fabric. Now this is another case where I can take my tearaway stabilizer. In fact, I can use the same piece that I used at the beginning to take a chunk off. And I can place that under my foot and surge off onto that to finish my cover stitch. That's one thing. Another thing um, to be aware of when you're doing a cover stitch hem, if it ends, if you're not going all the way around in a circle and it ends, you do need to actually tie this off. Okay, you can do that manually by literally tying knots in the threads after it's been pulled out. But you, there's actually a quick and easy way to do a, um, a back stitch to secure your hem. So I'm going to lift my foot to give it a little bit, release the tension, give me a little room to work. And I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to just gently pull a little slack in the threads. Now, we all know that sergers only surge in one direction, and that is they pull the fabric toward the back of the machine. But you're actually going to wiggle that fabric toward yourself a little bit because you want to stitch over the previous, like say, two stitches, two, three stitches. Okay, so I've I've slid my fabric forward just a little bit because, again, I gave myself that slack in the threads. I'm going to take a few stitches, and that will backstitch and secure the end of my hem. Now I can just simply lift my foot to release the tension. I'm going to pull my hem out of the machine. I'm going to pull it back in the direction that surges, back and at kind of a 45-degree angle away from the serger. So gently but firmly, give it a good pull. Okay, I can trim those threads, and there we have our very quick and simple cover stitch hem. Now let me show you on the overhead what this looks like. So here we have, I used a, a narrow setting, and of course it always looks better with a little press. So that's the front side. You can see that twin stitching there. And then the back stitch, the back, you can see how the, the chain stitch looper has just skimmed the raw edge of our neckline. So it catches everything. You have to make sure it catches that because otherwise you're not securing your hem. But ideally it's going to skirt right along the edge of your fabric. Now, if you come inbound a little bit from the, the raw edge of your hem, it's not a big deal. Okay, um, there's a couple things you can do. You can actually just trim off the excess very carefully. Don't, don't clip those looper threads. And you can also, uh, before you do your neckline, you can kind of cheat and use a regular overlock stitch 
on the very raw edge. And then when you do the, the next row with the loopers, usually it'll catch that, the previous overlocked edge stitching, and you can't tell where one began the other left off. So that's, that's kind of a, a way that to, to kind of cheat to make it look like it's all perfectly lined up. But I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of there. That looks quite, quite lovely. So I hope you enjoyed this little tip for making serging simple by creating a simple cover stitched hem or neckline.